Welcome to the World of Horror Podcast, Season 4, Episode 5. I'm Mom. And I'm Mac. This is the podcast where we share our love of international horror. Fear is universal, but we are not afraid of subtitles. Well, hus! <laughs> <laughs> well, hus! This week, our topic is zombies! We reviewed two horror comedies this week, One Cut of the Dead from Japan and Shaun of the Dead from the UK. Before we get into it, fair warning, these discussions will include spoilers. Let's move on to our first segment, Mom and Mac Chat. Hi, Mac. How's it going? Hi, Mom. <laughs> you know, mm. it's going. I actually have, uh, well, we, and you, <laughs> you don't have to even keep this, I guess, like, <laughs> like this is, will be the first time I'm telling you this, but, uh, Uh-oh. I actually decided on tomorrow that i'm gonna quit my job oh my gosh oh my gosh i don't have anything else lined up but i do have money i've been saving for a really long time to be able to do this but it just is like i cannot like it is truly like so and like i i saved enough to be like comfortable for a while so like and i I don't want to use all of it obviously but i might take like a month to just be like because <sighs> I'm confident I can find another job in something, but I mean, I maybe that's famous last words, and I'll be. I really don't think that will happen. But anyways, like I don't even want to look for anything. I just want to like, <sighs> you know, mm-hmm. or, like I need, and it's not even to like live the high life. It's to get up to neutral. Because like mm-hmm. I just feel like I've been, I don't know like burnt out for a really long time and i was just telling like alan i was like i just don't think there's a possibility i can be my best self here so like why keep working here you know yeah i'm ready for the next thing oh my goodness gracious well good luck also why i can't continue at my job because i am not i'm one of everyone else at my job and it's like like energy is real like energy and vibes they're 100 percent real you can't tell me that they aren't because like when i feel it when i walk into there and mm. just everybody you see and you go how are you because that's obviously that's the way we greet people here it's like hey how are you and it's always like well um i hate my life um wish i was dead and uh i can't do it anymore it's like imagine if you're hearing that from multiple people every yeah. like everyone it's everyone except for the, like the five people who you hate because they're so stupid they're too stupid to realize that they're in hell <laughs> and you're like you fool you don't even realize <laughs> we're in the pits of hell you idiot <laughs> I, I sure do like it when I get an extra lashing it feels so good like yeah. seriously there's some people so dumb anyways can I uh, tell you something cool yeah YouTube is really hard to break into i don't know i don't know what i have been doing wrong this whole time but whatever it's fine and so i would be putting, i would be putting all these energy into making all this energy into making videos and then it would be like oh yeah i got like nine views and that just it, it's not it wasn't enough it was like getting underpaid in a way like where i was just like this just isn't enough to justify all these hours but then multiple streamer friends told me you need to make shorts Shorts is basically like YouTube's version of TikTok. Mm -hmm. So all the videos have to be like phone, you know, skinny size. And like, it it has to be under 60 seconds. And they were like, I don't know what it is, but just the algorithm picks up your shorts, whereas it does not pick up videos. And I tried it. And it's true. (laughs) It's true. Because like, and I'm not saying like, I do think everything I put out everything that i put out with my name on it i do it because i think it's good and i think it's funny and if you don't think it's funny that's more of like concerning on your part like truly that is what i think like and i can't (laughs) deny that like (laughs) so if whenever my things didn't get used before i was just like well that just sucks for me because like it's funny and now with this short and it truly is just an algorithm is picking it up one of them has four thousand views oh my goodness so that's also something we should do i feel like if we put yeah. little clips like i think because i'm just using it as advertising really it's just like this is my stream like that's all i want it to be is just like free advertising well i kind of let go of the youtube channel and i really need to like get back on that because people were you know viewing 
you know, I mean, there's nothing to view, but they were yeah. listening to the podcast over YouTube. So, I mean, I don't know what access people have in other countries. Well, or even in this country. So I hope I'm not disappointing, you know, a lot of people. But anyway, so that, that, that's something that I've been thinking about. And, um, that's great. And I think maybe this summer, you know, I want to like jump back in and like, yeah, spend a lot of time. I mean, I'm going to try not to work like a ton, like maybe just three classes. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I've been saving up all year. You know, I have an account. I save up all year for this and then. But I usually work as much as I possibly can over the summer, but I can't. Mm-mm. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want yeah. to do that. So um, I would like to have more fun. And like, I haven't done any art lately. And I walked oh. into there, the room the other day to, I don't know, do something. And it, it like vibes. I was just like, oh, like it feels so good in there. And I was just yeah. like, I need to like do that. Because I, I guess I just have this sort of like... <sighs> I'll just really get into something like the podcast or my art or even like designing classes. And that's just what I focus on. And then to the exclusion of other things. So I just need to find a way to kind of do a little bit of everything um, so that I don't miss doing something. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but I have to finish your box anyway, because if you come next weekend, I want to give it to you. (laughs) So I'll have to do some art this week. I was going to say whether I want to or not, but of course I always want to. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to talk about One Cut of the Dead or would you prefer to talk about Sean? Can I talk about Sean? And I only say this because, like, I feel like you have a lot of love for One Cut Uh of the Dead. And no, no, I liked it, but like, I honestly want to hear you describe it. Okay. Because you were so, like, enthusiastic about me watching it. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I can't remember when I first watched it, but it was probably two Christmases ago or something. But it's on Shudder, and you can also rent, rent it on Prime, I think. One Cut of the Dead. The uh, 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 mangled Japanese is Kamara Otamuru Na, which means don't stop the camera. And it was written and directed by Shinchiro Ueda, starring Takayuki Hamatsu as the director, Mao as Mao, Harumi Suhama, Yuzuki Akiyama, Kazuaki Nagaya, and it was released on November 4th, 2017 in Japan, has a running time of 97 minutes. The budget for the film was 3 million yen, which in American dollars is 25,000, and the box Tiny. office was <laughs> 3.12 billion yen, which translates into $31.2 million worldwide. Good for them. I mean, good for them. OMG. That's amazing. I li- yeah, good for I mean, I like it when a small cuz cuz the thing about this movie that I learned was basically Ueda went to this like drama company mm-hmm. in Tokyo and mm-hmm. just like found these actors Aww. who were all unknown or mostly unknown and he had worked with the uh, Yuzuki before mm-hmm. but otherwise and you can kind of see that in the end in the credits you know everyone's just sort of smiling and you know their teeth aren't you know like Hollywood teeth or anything yeah. they're just so like sweet and nice and um in the like the acting I thought was like great like I don't know like for what this movie is trying to do I think it does it perfectly yeah I do too I yeah, we'll get into it, but yeah, when you first, when I first started watching it, I was like, oh, okay, I'm not sure. But okay, then, then you're like, oh, it's genius. It is. <laughs> it is. You guys, I mean, if you haven't seen this film, just really give it a chance, and you'll have to wait until, oh, I don't know, 40 minutes in. To, to... Which, and even then, you're going to have to wait until the very end last yes. scene to get the full effect. And I feel like just 97 minutes is not that long. 
Like, just know that everybody loves this movie and then you'll, by the end of it, you'll know why. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's all you got to know. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's the way I feel about it. So um, it follows a team of actors and filmmakers who are tasked with shooting a zombie film for live television and who must and who must do so in a single take. And that take is 37 minutes long. And it took six takes for the actors to get it. Wow. But they only shot over eight days. That's amazing. <laughs> this whole, like, that's crazy. Really crazy. Okay. So to talk about this. I'm not really sure. I haven't really. I mean, I, 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 uh, I wrote down everything that happened, but we don't need to, we don't really need to do that. But in the opening scene, we have an actor and an actress. We know that they're being shot by a team and the actress is not great. Um, and that's where I was kind of like, Oh, is this whole thing going to be like that? Cause I'm not sure I can hang if that's <laughs> the way it's going to be. And the director that like, gets in her face and is just like yelling at her and telling her, you know why it doesn't feel real? Because you, all you spew are lies. <laughs> and he's like, why don't you take off your mask of like lies? And he's just like in her face. And then like, landing the wall next to her. Like, yeah. And she's like very aggressive. Obviously, like, you know, pulling away from him and everything. And then the male actor tries to intervene and he slaps that kid in the face. And so this guy's out of control, and we find out that this is the 42nd take of this scene. So everyone thinks, so the director kind of storms off, and uh, he's got to go get some air or something, and everyone's just sort of like, are you okay? Are you okay? And she's like, oh, I, I really do need to work on it. I'm not that great. And everyone else is like, no, you're great. You're fine. He's yeah, an insane he's crazy. maniac. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, you sort of don't know what's happening at, at this point because some of the dialogue's kind of awkward. It seems like there's kind of like awkward pauses and stuff. But the main premise is that they're shooting this zombie movie in this abandoned factory. And there was an urban legend that way back, like World War II, like the government was involved in these experiments on humans. And what they were trying to do was figure out how to bring people back from the dead. So, <laughs> like, on cue, right, there's, like, a knock at the door. And then he's like, oh, it's the wind or whatever. But these zombies start attacking the actors. And that's, you know, that's what we see happen the <laughs> over the next, like, half hour. And the director, every time he's in the shot, he's like, keep rolling, keep rolling, that's good. <laughs> and he's actively putting them in harm's way. Mm -hmm. Like he's, like they they have like, they'll, they'll be barricaded against the zombies and then he opens up the door and throws one in there. Like he's, because he's like, come on, I want to see real fear. And they're like, this guy's nuts. Also, I do love the director. He, like, I love his vibe. It's very much my vibe. He's got like, and it's so, I, I can't speak to everything about like Japanese pop culture references or, or anything, but I, all I can say is that I have played, uh, games from the Yakuza series and there is a quest line where you play a very serious character. Um, and he has to go talk to this like TV director and he was dressed and looked just like how they dressed this guy. Like this seems like a total vibe that they're going for. He's wearing like a like a Hawaiian shirt. Really, he's really small, and I really do. I did like that. Um, as a fellow short uh king, but yeah, all that to say, I think this is a thing. Oh yeah, and I wanted to ask you about that too because the one character looks like a damn like manga or anime. The kid with the big glasses. Oh, he's just yeah, like yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. he looks like a cartoon. Total dork. Yeah. yeah, amazing. So. Just sort of one by one, these people get picked off, and it's, you know, it's a zombie movie. But that's, like, 34 minutes into yeah. the movie. And, you know, the credits come down, one cut of the dead. And you're like, what is happening? You know? Because, you know, <laughs> it's over. We're, we're good to go. Okay, so then we get to one month ago, and we see all the actors. Well, we don't see all the actors. We see the director. He's married to one of the women who was in the movie, and 
they have a daughter, Mao. And Mao's like 18 or so. She's going to be leaving soon. And she is, she directs or she like assistant directs. Uh, but she's a little bit uh, intense because she wants everything to be real. And like, um, she has no filter. <laughs> no. And one of her actors wants to use um, eye drops for tears. This child. A little kid. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, you've got to like, get into yourself and she's like have you ever cried because you've been angry i know i have like she's like she's like sometimes you got to go into a really dark place <laughs> so her, she's like gripping the kid too <laughs> the mom you know the stage mom like jumps in and she's like the director said eye drops were fine and um, everyone's pulling mao off and um her father it has been sort of stalking not stalking but like spying on her to see what's happening with her at work and so there's just sort of this uh, comical scene where everyone's pulling Mao off. But kind of, it, it's also kind of because before this, do they show him like him directing? Yeah. And he's very like, like, you know, somebody wants to use eye drops and he's like, that's, you, you know, of course, that's totally fine. Like he's very, we'll do anything that the producers say. And so his daughter, you know, is the one who's actually like being honest with her feelings. So our guy is asked if he wants to do this like crazy project, which is to shoot a zombie film on live television with one camera. But he's asked to do this because his catchphrase for himself is fast, cheap, but average. (laughs) (laughs) So, and the TV execs are amazing. They're super intense. They're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the more average the better like let's just like do this and so at first he thinks they're joking they're like oh no we're dead serious like we want this to happen and so then he it's kind of cute he looks from one exec to the other exec and then he looks into the camera and he's got this really worried look on his face boom new ki- title card one cut of the dead love it and and so we see the the scenes from the movie that we saw mm-hmm. but we also see the the execs are in the cast. Mm-hmm. Like everybody's in this new thing that we're watching. And I guess that was when I was first watching this film. I'm like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is everything. Yeah. You think you're watching this like crappy, you know, zombie movie, but then you find out that it's some other thing entirely. And I just yeah. love that so much. So you meet all the actors. And they're very different than the parts they play. But they all have sort of, you know, issues. Like, the lead boy <laughs> is so handsome. and um, But he's really pretentious. And he's just really an ass. And he is mean to my favorite guy, the cartoon-looking guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Because he, and he's, like, kind of, like, just full of bullshit because... He's talking to one person. He's like, yeah, there's actually a lot of um, themes of uh, racism in, in this one. And that that's why I was really drawn. And so then the cute little dorky guy like comes over with a notebook and paper. And he's like, it's like, so could you tell me like, because I, I don't know, but could you tell me what the racist parts were? And he's like, I, I need to focus. <laughs> I need to be in the zone here. So he's always just like talking out of his ass. <laughs> yeah. And the guy who's the director of photography is a drunk. And there's a sort of like it's awkward and sad, yeah. Also kind of funny, but mostly sad that he he's decided he's not going to drink during the movie, but he will sure like celebrate when the shooting is done. But he is going to lose his daughter, like if he doesn't stop drinking. And he goes, "I've really got to you know do that, but it's so much fun to drink." And the director guy is just like, oh, gosh, yeah, uh-huh. Because he's having trouble with his own daughter. He doesn't can't have an alcohol issue, but he's he can't connect. And it's tough because it must be confusing because it's like, might be like a, a creative stream to have their child be into the exact same creative outlet that they are. So how come they aren't closer? But. As it has been established, you know, he's sort of sold out and Mm -hmm. she hasn't reached that point yet. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, the mother is 
Oh my gosh, maybe Queen, maybe my favorite, right? Yeah, show stealer, absolute show stealer. In the in the in the first part of the yeah. movie, definitely, definitely. Um, not not that I don't think it could, but like she keeps it livened up, you know, or else it would have been a total snooze fest in the very beginning, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and then as it goes on, she adds so much humor to this. But like genuine, like she's so funny. She's in her own movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She is really something else. So she, she just keeps taking on different hobbies and she's like run through a bunch of them, I guess, you know, ballroom dancing and all kinds of things. So now her latest thing is self defense. And we <laughs> see the instructional self defense video, which is so funny to me because they just keep using this like same absurd tactic over and over again and basically all it is is if somebody grabs you from from behind you just like push your arms up which will get the person off you but you have to lean forward and you have to say the word pum because that will startle the attacker so much and the instructor saying this is essential this is what you really (laughs) And she says it too in the first part. She's like, she's like, now the palm is essential. But they keep doing it. They do it over and over. And I, I don't know. Sometimes up. that is stupid, but in this case, it's so funny. It works. Oh wow, you really did go into detail. Oh, I really did. <laughs> <laughs> After everybody's cast, including the really you know cute boy, and the father casts him, you know to. That's sort of like a favor, I guess, to his daughter, because mm-hmm. she's got this wild crush on him. I really like the scene. There isn't any dialogue. It's just them, like, blocking out the movie mm-hmm. in this room. And people are, like, pretending to be the camera people. And, you know, um, just like you do, if you've ever yeah. played a play or anything Oh, like this that. was, like, very realistic. Yeah. At home, the wife is reading the script of One Cut of the Dead. And the daughter says, you know, you should get back into acting because, like, you really like that. And (laughs) the wife is just, like, super serious all of a sudden. She's like, I really shouldn't. (laughs) 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 We don't know why. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Um, But it's revealed that she just gets too deep into her characters. And apparently she broke the arm of one of her, like, acting partners once because she was just, like, so into it. So I like that too, this commentary on like acting and people taking themselves way too seriously. I also feel like these, all of these characters, even though the movie itself is so short and then every single character, it's, you don't get a ton of time, but it's like they, they give each character like a rich history in a way. Like the each, like uh, the main characters have timelines and they feel like, you know, not that we know their inner deep workings, but it's like, you get a sense of like, I know who that is, you know, mm-hmm. and I just feel like that's really the characterization that they do in that um, without just flat out saying like, this is what happened to this person. And this is what happened with this person. Because and also with the um, with the lead actress, like in the in the film part we see in the beginning, you know, she seems very even timid when, you know, he's telling her to. she's like, you know, I do need to do better. And like she she seems very doesn't have any confidence in herself or anything. But then when we see her, it's not that she's like a total diva, but she's, she is fake as shit. Like, oh, she's yeah. like, oh uh, there's vomit. And like, I would totally do it, but my agency won't let me, which is like such a real thing that I would do too. Just when you're like, not because it's also another thing to be like that, that asshole guy and be, you know, your asshole self, but like, she can't even be like herself, you know? And I just found that so interesting. It, it's so much more interesting than if she was just like a diva who was like, I can't yeah. do this. But she was like, oh, I, I would, but I And can't. she's also got this like, ca- the, her own catchphrase where she's like, love theme. You know, it's like, what the hell? But, um, as, you know, fans come up to her and are like, would you do it? Would you do it? So she's got her own, like, I don't know. She's a celebrity, I guess. But, there's a mild car crash like off screen and the makeup person, well, the person who play, plays the makeup person and the person who plays the director are romantically linked and they were in the same car and they are out of the production. So instead of just calling off the whole thing, our guy jumps in as the director 
and then <laughs> his wife jumps in as the woman playing the make it even then he's like he's like no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> and she's like you're right you're right I, no like i can't their expressions are so <laughs> so like deadly serious yeah this isn't even like a thing like like in a weird thing like husband and wife it's just like we this don't talk a about that idea <laughs> like and he's like he's trying to explain to his daughter he's like i suffered so much in the past you don't understand <laughs> and she's like he kind of is like well, we just got to do it and there's also all these other little subplots like one of the camera people he has like a little uh he has a female assistant and she really wants to hold the camera and is working so hard and but he's like no no you can't and and the wife she says she's read the script like a thousand times and i don't know it's just I love them all so much. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. This is the part where I don't think I want to really spoil it because then the last part of the movie is watching them shoot this movie, this 37 minute movie in one take with all the, you know, with all these things that go wrong. And there's like improvisation involved. The drunk obviously gets drunk. Um, and so, uh, I, but I do love the director, like holding his body and like making yes. his like arms move like a puppet, um, it's off so camera. Good. It's so cool. It's so good. So y'all, you just have to watch this thing, um, because it's really fun. And the last thing made me tear up. Oh, I totally did. And I would say this, and I said it when it was like on one of my lists, you know, at some point in the show that this is really a movie about art like making art like in a group um like a play um and how it really co all comes together when people let go of their egos you know for the same thing and that like even anything that you do ever like i like i don't know yeah that just such, is a great message of especially something like that which is you do it once and that's the only time you know that that you do it it's you're never going to do it perfectly, but the thing that you did is going to be its own, like, beautiful, great thing that never would have happened if you had done it perfectly, you know, which is great. Um, yeah. And, you know, improv and, you know, being creative in the moment also is really great. And, yeah, it's just it's like a really sweet movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's really sweet. I wrote down this one quote comes at the very end when the director is starting to take himself very seriously. And the exec says to him, this is a TV show, not art. Your average will do. I that is good. That. Yeah. But um, how would we rate this, Mac? I thought maybe, well, I didn't know. I, I wrote down prop severed heads mm. or fake zombie contact lenses. Let's do prop severed heads. Okay. <laughs> I would give it five. You would? I think I would. Because it's so good. It's really like, good. It's this, it, the concept and everything I just think is perfect and I like it I liked it more after talking to you about it oh my gosh I I really like this movie and I thought it might be the kind of thing you can only watch once but I've seen it like three or four times now and I still like it and I still teared up at the moments and um yeah. so yeah okay I'll give it a five too we get back on track like the the <laughs> I just feel like the the characters and the actors really make it and I don't know like it's so fun and it's I I just feel like you see everything that they were trying to do and they did it and the medium that they did it with is really interesting and cool to tell a story like that the way that they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean there's like shit about families and I guess yeah. even marriage and just like, I don't know, just like, yeah, the ending nice. scene is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, but um, what have we learned, Matt? Hmm. Be honest. Well, okay, honestly, I also vibe pretty heavy with this movie because of just this guy living his life of like, I'm doing something I don't, I'm doing this a way I don't want to do it, but I just want to like play it safe, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that, 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 that will be good enough, you know? Um, and I like that the message is like, no, you know what? Like work with people, create something and lean on other people too. 
because it, in a way it kind of felt like he was just kind of trying to be like, I'll just do this thing, you know, and just, yeah, whatever. Well, I also think he was trying to please too many people. And yes. then when it got right down to it, when he goes off on the actors, you understand that he's yeah. doing that because he hasn't been true to himself and he's taken shit from stupid actors in the past or whatever. And so he, when he blows, it's genuine. Yeah. And it's, this is a good movie. I like this yeah. movie a lot. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, and when he does, when he, when he blows up, it's like, that the people the producers like it like they're like yeah. wow he's a great actor <laughs> yeah yeah it's funny i mean I, I don't know how different japanese tv is to any other kind of tv but you know just a sort of like pop culture factory that just like pumps shit out like to just yeah. get people that buy shit so i'm imagining that's where these people are coming here i mean certainly i can speak to anime there is a lot of anime that is just like we'll just put these into a generator make the most shitty thing and everybody will you know buy up all the the, the toys and the games and they will and it's if, if a certain studio makes it and people are really disappointed because when people you know give the time and money to real art which they can do mm -hmm. obviously like it is great so Let's do that <laughs> instead, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not as familiar with Japanese stuff, obviously, as I am with Korean stuff. And I, you know, I look to people, I look to like Korean critics to tell me like what's good. Mm -hmm. And so I think I've mostly seen like the best stuff. Mm -hmm. But I came across this show and it was not good. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So, right. So they don't yeah. just like produce. Like, yeah, because they they do produce at a really high level, but yeah. they also produce a lot. So yeah. obviously, not everything's going to be, you know, amazing. But yeah. like my mister, that's a great show. If you guys are mm -hmm. looking for a great show, <laughs> my mister, <laughs> you're gonna have or Prison Playbook, you're gonna have to invest. <laughs> you know, yeah. every episode is an hour and a half long, and there are 16 episodes a season. So, but. You'd, uh, you know, you've heard me talk about these shows. Yeah. So. Would we watch this again? Yes. I will too. And I will. Yeah. Super fun. Very soon. Okay. So, um, Shinichiro Ueda directed, edited, and wrote the script for this. Um, he was an independent filmmaker, and this was his first, like, feature length mm -hmm. film. And, um, he said that, yeah, he said it was partially inspired by, Yoichi Wada's stage play Ghost in the Box. Now, Wada got a little into his feelings and said he was going to get all litigious, but they settled and he, he has a credit at the end of the film. But I was like, oh, that's too what, bad. What, I, I wonder how similar it was. Well, yeah. So, you know, Wada said it was like influenced, but he didn't, yeah. he didn't think it was plagiarism. And I guess Wada dropped it, but I'm I'm I mean I'm glad the writing credit was enough because I mean I'd be totally like yeah sure I mean may, maybe that is what he wanted was it in there like I mean I don't know what I would do I've never had anything be you know a great thing that ins that inspires the creation of other things but I what I do find kind of interesting that I've seen kind of more commonly now because art is influential and like you can build upon it or change it I've seen people take like jokes or like tweets that people make and say like this person wrote this joke but like you know here's me uh mm. like doing my own take on it with this drawing um like i didn't come up with any of the lines or anything and i like that oh it's yeah like a cover. and i think that's fine i mean that's yeah. why remix is a thing you know yeah a french language remake titled final cut began its production in april 2021 so look forward to that i guess Cool. Um, Hopefully it's good. Most of the cast paid money. What? To, to be in this movie, at least initially, because it was the final product of an acting and directing workshop put on by that. Company. Oh. And an early scene where he's, you know, done 42 takes with this actress is meant to be a sly reference to the filming of The Shining. During which Stanley Kubrick famously bullied Shelley Duvall to get a better performance. I would say psychologically tortured. <laughs> like that poor woman. 
Yeah. There is a blood splash in one shot and the cameraman like wipes the um blood away. That was real. They, they just make a note that was real. It wasn't post production. So let's turn now to Sean and the Dead. <laughs> And so, yeah, mom had asked me what, you know, what should we do other than One Cut of the Dead? And honestly, the only thing I could think of was Shaun of the Dead, because I was like, it just feels like the quintessential. And I mean, okay, at this point, when I suggested it, I had not seen uh, One Cut of the Dead all the way through. But, you know, it's like a classic comedy zombie. I feel like this, <laughs> the zombie part doesn't really have much to do with, like, <laughs> One Cut of the Dead or anything. But I don't know. Another, another comedy zombie movie and one of the first like anything related to horror i think i ever really saw so it's directed by edgar wright written by simon pegg and edgar wright it stars simon pegg kate ashfield lucy davis nick frost uh dylan moran bill how do you say that i say nye but some people say really hit he part like nike but i don't know bill nye and (laughs) penelope wilton it was released uh, in London on the 29th of March in 2004 and in the U.S. Uh, 24th of September in 2004. We're in time of 99 minutes and it had a budget of $6.1 million, mm-hmm. significantly larger than 25000 for sure, but a lot more. There's a lot of people in this movie <laughs> and it made $30 million at the box office. So I do think that the opening sequence of this movie or like the whole, you know, main thing of like the parallel of like his everyday life to then the next day zombies is just like art in itself. Like that's just great. Basically, you know, it opens up with Simon Pegg, aka Sean, who I love that you wrote this down because he says he's 29. And when you look at this man, you are like, oh, no, you are not. <laughs> that's a hard 29. <laughs> yeah, it's a very hard 29. <laughs> no, so he was 34. 30. And it's actually Simon Pegg's birthday tomorrow as we're recording this um, because his birthday is February 14th, 1970. So happy birthday, Simon. Happy birthday. He's lis- he'll be listening like, oh, oh, they shouted me out. I'm so pleased. Our number one fan, Simon Pegg. <laughs> A friend of the show. So basically, Simon Pegg, I mean, Sean, he is, I mean, to me, it almost is hard to like describe this movie because I'm like, we've all seen it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> In my head is like, I've seen it so many times, but he is just wearing this like very, all I can think of is, you know, white shirt, red tie. Um, he works at like a technology store. Um, he's got this red like Sharpie in him in his, in his pocket. And we just kind of see him go about his daily life. He lives with two guys that he's known for a long time. One of whom is Nick Frost, who, you know, they're obviously great friends in real life, these two. And the whole kind of concept is like, oh, well, what's his name? Ed. Ed is just like a deadbeat. Like he only plays video games. He deals weed and he drinks and you know, farts and is just like a slob. Meanwhile, Simon and I mean, Sean and their other roommate work regular jobs and whatnot. But he loves him. That's his guy. Yeah. Um, it's his friend. And he, he just doesn't see the things other people see. Like, as soon as he's with him, he's like, he's like, oh, well, everything he says is funny. <laughs> and their relationship really is quite sweet. So there's a really long take of him walking to work. Um, he, we see him go to like the corner store and like, he's got his whole routine. We see this whole scene of like people walking and they already look like zombies, even though there are no zombies yet. Because it's kind of a commentary, I guess, on, like, we lead these boring lives. But as he's going to work, he does see, like, a f- we do just see a few weird background things, which I gotta say, this kind of is one of my favorite things in any zombie movie, is I just, like, if a zombie movie takes place way after the beginning part, I'm so disappointed. Because, like, I want to see the descent into chaos. Like, like there's a woman that, like, collapses like while he he's he's in the bus he sees a woman clasp at the butts at the bus stop but it just drives away so he forgets about it like i feel like there are so many things like that in life too that i just love the sequence Mm -hmm. you know 
<laughs> like he he goes into the pub in the evening and he sees these two people like making out and he's like those two <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> but they're not <laughs> well they are then but then they're not but then they're not but there's just a lot of great jokes like that so Sean goes to uh you know he goes to work we realize he doesn't have a great relationship with his stepdad he's he's very weird he's <laughs> almost like a petulant child people are like oh your dad's here by the way he's like it's not my dad but i like your stuff um <laughs> real thing i think and so he goes and uh hangs out with his girlfriend and you know she's basically like i can't do this anymore all we ever do is hang out with your friend we never really hang out with my friends and all we ever do is go to this pub the um the winchester yeah mm-hmm. yeah and <laughs> so they leave. Yeah, we see the the woman eating her boyfriend. <laughs> and that evening, uh, their their roommate Pete says he was bitten by crackheads outside. And so then the next day, the zombie stuff. It, it's now the descent. Like it's things are not okay. But Sean walks to work the exact same way he did yesterday and doesn't notice anything because I guess the behavior wasn't that different than before. Uh, but basically, you know, he goes back to the house. Him and Ed see, uh, you know, newscaster talk about wa- watch out for bite victims. They go outside. There's a great scene. This is another iconic one, I think, of there's a woman outside and they're like, oh, what's this drunk lady doing here? You know, like, hey, where are you? And but then she goes up to Sean and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa get her off me. And he pushes her and she lands on this like pipe extending out of the ground and it goes through her stomach. She stands up, and there's still the hole in her stomach, and we see Sean and Ed through the hole. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's so good, and they're like, okay, this is weird. And then there's a really big zombie guy, and so then they have this whole sequence where they're trying to fight them off. Because the zombies themselves are not that intimidating. They're, like, <laughs> really lazy. Really like, slow. They're just like, but if you get close to them, you know, they'll try to bite you, but... The zombies, if, if Shaun of the Dead took place in the zombie movies of today, everybody would be dead already. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but anyways, so you, they, they start hitting them with records and, you know, Shaun's like, like, oh no, that's like an original, you know, minted one. You can't throw that one. And they, they eventually get them. Oh, I think this is the part where they, Shaun has a plan mm-hmm. and he's like, this is going to be real simple. Like we're just yeah. going to drive over and get mom and. Then we're just gonna go get Liz and and they're all it's all very stylized and everybody's like holding hands and like it's like all these and, zoom ins you know yeah and yeah. then when he sits down on the couch he like has a cup of tea and he like winks at the camera he's like so, we'll just sit and wait until this thing all blows over <laughs> it's just got it all you know that's his plan but obviously <laughs> that doesn't work out and the, there's three iterations of this because he keeps remembering things that he's got to figure out he calls his mom. She's like, oh, yes, I, you know, everything's fine. There were some weird men at the house. And he's like, are you okay? Are you hurt? She's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm fine. Um, Philip did get bitten. <laughs> and he <laughs> then adds, okay, so kill my stepdad onto the plan. And so they go to get him. <laughs> hey, they drive Pete's car because Pete's a zombie. And Ed's like, I've always wanted to drive Pete's car. There's another great scene where they hit a guy. And, you know, Sean's like, well, we have to go back and make a check. And they look at him and he's got like one leg, like, you know, it's, he's completely like mangled and he's like, Hey, are you okay? <laughs> and the guy's been a zombie the whole time. And he's like, Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> they <drive away. laughs> So they go into the house and, you know, he's totally prepared to kill his stepdad, but he's actually not dead yet. So they get into the car and they go over to Liz's house. And they have to drive also his his Cadillac or Chevrolet or something because somehow Ed has crashed the car. No, it's a Jaguar. Oh, the Jag, yeah, the Jag. Because Ed also crashed. That's <laughs> like an that's pole. like an XJ7 or something. And that is the car that I wanted really? when I was yeah from when I was 16 years old. There, it's the boxy kind of Jag. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Because one day, <laughs> when I was in my Beetle, which also I would kill to have today, and but at the mm-hmm. time I thought it was really a junky car, I was in my Beetle, and there was this woman next to me, and she had on a trench coat, and she was driving this like brown Jaguar, and I was like, oh, "That's what I want." <laughs> I never got one, but that's okay. 
<laughs> so it's a really great car. So um, what's his you name? You get it. Ed really wants to drive this car. So he crashes the Jeep's car. He's like, oh, he oh I don't know what happened. <laughs> so there's actually a genuinely sweet scene where, uh, well, actually, wait, wait. They, they go to Liz's place. Um, they won't let him in. So he climbs up and he's like, you know, we, we got to we gotta get out of here. And they also take Liz's uh, two roommates. Let's see. What's what are their names? David and Diane, maybe? David. Yeah, David and Diane. Um, Diane was in the original office. She's yes. the original Pam. And the original Jim is in this too, Martin Freeman. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they all get into the car. Philip has a moment with Sean where he's like, you know, I have actually always loved you. But then he turns into a zombie. So they all have to get out of the car. So now they're going to walk to the Winchester. And, you know, there's a lot of like little banter. David's being a little shit. And so he then meets up with Avon. She was in Space? What yeah. Was that? She, that was the show that Edgar Wright directed that Simon mm. Pegg and Yvonne, well, the person who plays Yvonne, were in before this movie. So, okay. you know, English, English audiences would have known this reference. They're old friends, right? Because they did a show even together. In, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even in the movie, it feels just like, oh, this is a, you know, um, he's just meeting up with an old friend. And so they, and so she's like, where, where are you guys going? And they're like, well, we're going to the Winchester. And she's like, oh, the the bar? And he's like, yeah. She's like, well, okay. And she's going the exact opposite way. And when they go by, everybody's got their own doppelganger. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's pretty, like, the sequence is pretty great because everybody greets each other like, like the two uh Diane's are like Hi, and the two mom <laughs> the two moms are like Hi, you know <laughs> and the both ed- both of the ads are just like on their phones and they go mm. well, you know um, that, you know who the other ad is who is he Matt what's his face Matt Lucas who's that it, well he's bald now but mm. he like in one movie he played um Rebel Wilson's brother ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah 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 I love him yeah yeah, he's great. So they, you know, they leave. Barbara accidentally gets left behind because she sees one of her neighbors, um, who is obviously a zombie, but she kind of doesn't really have a grip on reality, really. <laughs> Barbara. <Yeah. laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so the, they, they really, she's gone. They go back to get her. They, they impale this guy on a tree. So they're like, well, how are we going to get to the Winchester? The, the streets are full of zombies. So Diane, shows them all how to act like zombies and that's a pretty cute scene they then there's an argument between sean and ed because when they get to the winchester they can't get inside and then ed's cell phone because they're all pretending to be zombies they're not trying to blow their cover ed's cell phone rings and he's like oh yeah i'm not i'm not busy what's up (laughs) (laughs) and sean is like dude um david gets frustrated and just throws a garbage can through the window so sean draws the zombies away then they get inside and everybody's kind of arguing because David's like, you know, being a real shit about Sean. But they're like, you don't know what to do. And Ed asks, asks Liz for money. She's like, oh, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Sean uh, gets back inside and, um, you know, they're talking and you know he's figuring everything out. Uh, he's go- he goes back to check the breaker to turn the lights on so they can watch TV. And he notices that all the zombies have followed him, but he just kind of like closes the blind and he goes back to tell him he's like, we have a problem. And, but then right as that happens, Ed turns on the jukebox. <laughs> and so then people start coming through, you know, the windows and whatnot. And it's, uh, don't stop me now, uh, is, is playing. And, and Sean is like, kill, kill the queen. Like you, you go over here, you go <laughs> yeah. over here. Um, they they kind of get things backed up, but then we find out that Barbara was uh, bitten, and we get the other saddest scene of the movie, because David wants to kill Barbara, and Sean's like, you can't do that. And and then Barbara turns into a zombie, and, he kill, and Sean kills her. Then he pushes David away. David gets, uh, you know, reference to Night of the Living Dead, like he yes. gets pulled to the window, and they pull out his guts. Diane goes after him to avenge him. Ed gets bitten. And another by Pete and another zombie, and so they're they're all chilling in the basement. It's just Ed, Sean, and Liz. Ed, they give like a rifle because you know he's a zombie, and they decide to leave. Just at that moment, the army shows up, and <laughs> Yvonne is there. She helps Sean and Liz. Uh, they hold hands, and in the end, we find out it's like this 
it's this is this is also a great sequence because it kind of shows you what the British journalistic media would talk <laughs> how they would talk about it. And this includes like trashy shows like like a um, Mori or something like that. Like um we find out that life has gone back to normal. Zombies did the same zombies kind of do the same things that they did in life. You just have to make sure they don't bite anybody. So now there's reality shows where they're trying to get zombies to like grow up these things and there are zombies like labor forces. There's a woman who's like, I don't care, like that's my husband and of course I sleep in the same bed as him, um, even though he's a zombie. <laughs> and then we see um Sean and Liz live together and they, they have a very a much, you know, healthier like relationship and life, but then he's like, I think I'm gonna go to the shed for a bit and we find out that Ed is still there playing video games. And so I guess they live happily ever after. And I mean, it's so sweet. Ed's like all chained up and everything. And I mean, I don't know what it's the internal life of a zombie is, you know, like, but I always, that's one of the things I remember from the very first time I watched this film. I was just like, oh, yeah. like, <laughs> you know, they get to be together at the end. But it's also disturbing because he's yeah. chained up. He's, he's just basically like a lump of... Wouldn't you want to be put out of your misery? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I guess it's sort of like having a very brain-damaged pet or something, but... <laughs> <laughs> Who's dead? Yeah. But I guess the whole point of his character was he, he was not, that way. But that he was always sort of that way, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's you know, like, it's just, not evil. He's just like, no. I think he gets a little close to Sean, and Sean's like, hey, 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 buddy, back off. Yay. Hey. <laughs> it's like, whoa, no biting, no biting. Um, but they really do have, there's, there's so many moments where, like, like, the only one who can make him laugh is, mm. is Ed, and like, they just genuinely obviously do have such a real friendship and it's really sweet and like I love all their scenes together in the yeah. movie. It's really nice. I was also really impressed by Simon Pegg and because yeah. there's two scenes where he is legit like crying when he after Liz has broken up with him and he goes to the Winchester and he's just trying to drown his sorrows and his friend is just like Hey, it's fine, you know, and, yeah. and and his eyes are really red and puffy. I mean, it's not makeup; like he was really crying. And then, of course, when the mother dies, um, and apparently Simon Pegg and Nick Frost were both crying, um, oh. because Simon was, you know, imagining it was his mom, you know. So um, it's very <laughs> sweet and very touching. And I cry; I did cry, legit. Now, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, a little short on sleep. But <laughs> I did think it was very touching. It is. Yeah, anything else that you that impressed you watching it this time? Hmm. Let's see. I guess just, I don't know, like, I feel like watching a movie over and over and over again, you kind of know all the beats of it. And I just feel like it has many just, like, unforgettable sequences. And, the, and it kind of, like, obviously was not in any way like the first horror comedy, but I just feel like the market is way more saturated now. And this one really stands out to me, though, is like, a lot of these things feel really like, actually like unique and like fresh and stuff. And I feel like they managed to have something that's brutal, like, sweet and funny and Still, like, just a good movie. I did have a ton of trivia for this, by the way. There's, like, nothing in the script, but I had a oh. ton. But I guess it's on this other computer. Oh. But I don't know. Let's see if I can remember a couple of things. But one of the reasons I asked you that question, Matt, is you're 25, almost 26, and this movie came out when you were a kid. So, I mean, did you look at it differently? I mean, I didn't see it as much of a comedy when I was a kid because oh. I was like, people die. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it's violent. People die, and and he, his mom dies. Like, you know, I thought yeah. it was like the saddest thing ever because it kind of is. But I don't know. Now as like an adult, and obviously, it just I know that's gonna happen. So like, yeah. But I I guess as an adult, I did I did get a new appreciation. I guess for what he was trying to say about like the mind-numbing monotony of like mm. 
a life you are not enjoying living, you know, and and how that can actually ruin the relationships that you have. I think that's actually a very poignant and real message in how it's obviously not going to be a zombie apocalypse, but there could be something that, you know, makes you have to confront everything yeah. and your the way you think about things. And because, and, you know, he was wrong about Philip, you know, he like Philip wasn't a nice guy, you know, but he. Philip was saying all these sweet things. He was like, you know, by the time I met you, you were 12, you were already so grown up, but I wanted to be like a, you know, like an authority figure for you because I thought you might need that. And you could see how that's like, I mean, I did, I think you should obviously be nicer to kids, but you can see how like this character in this moment was really trying to do what they thought was best and like, that's sweet. And like, one I got things- a lot of like meanings and stuff in it. Oh, yeah. I mean, one of the things that really impressed me about the movie the first time I saw it was just how much love Sean has for his mom because often moms are portrayed as you know stupid or silly or evil but here she's just sort of a a sweet kind of ditzy person but she (laughs) the thing with the flowers you know she right before she dies she has realized that he has gotten her flowers I don't know it's her birthday the next day or something and she holds on to those damn things until the very end. And then she says, I never said thank you for the flowers. <laughs> oh my God. Wait. And like, and also it's like, okay, so he got those flowers for her. He then got them for Liz because she broke up with him. Or no, no, because they were going to have dinner that night and he forgot or something. But then he threw them in the trash. So the next day she, I, I feel like this is, I don't know, this is like so, so, such a reach, but. Like, I feel like there are people who are so pure of heart that they see Mm -hmm. something. And even though in itself, it really wasn't 100%, like, there's a lot of, like, meanings or, like, you know, parts. But, like, they just see the pure thought behind it. Yeah. And they value that. And they, like, and I just think that's really sweet. Like, and that's actually, like, a really nuanced thing that some people are just, it's not something I'm good at. Like, I second guess everything. And like, you know, I need things like totally spelled out for me a lot of the time. Like, but that's such a beautiful quality to have to be able to be like, like, he, like, wow, he got me flowers. That's so sweet. It's like he threw them in the trash. <laughs> You're so nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I found the trivia. Okay. Um, so George A. Romero, creator of the movies to which this movie plays homage and lampoons was so impressed with Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright's work that he asked them to cameo in Land of the Dead from Aww. 2005 as zombies. And did they? Yeah. Good for them. I mean, that's the guy. You impressed Romero. It's kind of like, okay, you did it. There are just a bunch of references. I can't remember Screen Rant or somebody like listed all the references, but a lot of, I think Edgar Wright really likes words, you know, mm. and wordplay. So, there's a bit about the restaurant. He's going to take her to this restaurant and it's Fulci. So Lucio Fulci is a master of like the Giallo school of like Suspiria is a Giallo. So like mm, this okay. is, yeah. So and, and on the minis, I'm going to be talking about a movie by Fulci called The Beyond. So that's coming Ooh. up. Uh, let's see. They were thinking about doing a sequel to replace the monsters. But then they just figured that this was, you know, nice as a standalone yeah, thing, which I really thing. appreciate. Me too. Um, but the sequel was going to be called From Dust Till Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's a mocked up poster, which can be seen in the film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Wow. <laughs> From Dust Till Sean. Random. Okay, so the gang, you know, the doppelganger gang. I mean, if you don't know who any of these people are, it's still really great because they're all dressed the same. And like you said, you know, the moms like greet each other and everything like that. But Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines, who are Tim and Daisy from Spaced, are there. Lucy Davis and Martin Freeman, Don and Tim from The Office, Dylan Moran and Tamsin Grieg. Dylan Moran was David. And then just Tamsin, I don't know, she's just like a random person there. But they were in a show called Black Books, and uh, I watched all of that. And 
then Julia Deacon and Nick Frost were also in that show spaced. So, you know, it, it works on these two levels of, you know, the characters are not. It's really kind of cool to see them. And apparently Michael Smiley was in the movie. And I think I missed him. I love that guy so much. Anyway, he's in a yellow cycling helmet and lighter shorts. He was a bicycle courier in Spaced, dressed in the same outfit. So there's just all these references and stuff. Yeah. But news broadcasters are we're all actual news broadcasters. And it I love good. the guy at the end where he's just like, I never thought I'd say such a thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> about like the removing head. the brains of the monsters. But also, there are voices of Mark Gaddis on the radio Ooh. and um, Rap Brydon, who is um, doing the Zombies from Hell show at the end. <laughs> and also, there's a little bit about dismissing the infected monkeys. Mary, mm-hmm. that's at your right. Mm. So, um, yeah, super fun choice here, Matt. Good job. <laughs> thank you i had a hard time with this just because my like attention span was just like i just mm-hmm. couldn't get in the right space but when i finally did and just like watched it um mm-hmm. it was just so much fun and they're just like so many throwaway lines like i don't know i think they're trying to figure out where to hole up at one place and nick frost is like well we can't do it here i mean look at the state of the place and it's that <laughs> way because of him and yeah. just like so, just like just a lot of throwaway stuff that's just really fun you pick it up the more times you watch it you shut it down Matt. shut it down <laughs> thank you for joining us for this episode and for all your support it means the world of horror to us truly next time it's mom's pick of genre and mom has chosen haunted houses we will look at beetlejuice from the u.s and the house at the end of time from venezuela we also want you to look out for some minis that i'm going to be dropping into your feed these will be 20 to 40 minute apps on classic before the year 2000 international horror movies. I'm working on lining up some academic types with real creds to, to talk with me about the cabinet of Dr. Caligari and some Mario Bava films and an early Cronenberg gem. In fact, Mac will help me with that and we'll have that for you real soon. So stay tuned for that. And remember, we love you and don't go into the basement.